Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in a series where I try to build my own tech company and share the lessons that I'm learning along the way. This week, I used Chart.js to build a line graph that shows the number of Pomodoros that my users have completed per day. For context, I'm building a productivity application and I have a bunch of videos on my channel on how I'm building it. If that interests you, please be sure to go check those out. But this is what I built over the past uh, couple weeks, and I wanna share how I use Chart.js to get this line graph. And there's a couple things that I had to specifically customize to fit my needs. And those are, one, I wanted to customize the title of the graph to dynamically update, to always be the title of the current month local to the user. And depending on where you are in the world, that's gonna update. I also wanted to update the days of the month, which is the X axis of this graph, to always reflect the correct number of days currently in this month for whatever year we're in. And I think that that's always the same, at least in American standards, except for leap years. So it won't change very often uh, year over year, but it will update correctly. And I also wanted to change the Y axis to always be zero to 12. And if you've worked with Chart.js before, specifically the line graphs before, you'll know that the Y axis usually updates sort of conditionally to match the min and max value of your data set. But for me, it was, it's rare for a user to hit 12 Pomodoros per day. So this chart was previously only showing whatever the maximum value they hit, but I wanted to always show zero to 12. So I'm gonna show you how I made those updates in addition to how I'm getting and, and formatting the data in order to allow Chart.js to paint this pretty line graph for us. So here is the React component that houses the line chart that we're using. It takes in, on line 100, uh, I have just a div that will um, create a box that takes up as much space as possible. And then we have that line component that's coming from the Chart.js React library. It takes in two properties, the options and the data. And we're building both above that. So the data we're building on line 87, it takes in labels and a data set which is an array of data sets. And the first data set, or the only one, is 90 to 95 is an object. We have a label and then we have our data and then you can alter the border color, background color, etc. I left that alone, but the data is the user data. That user data you can see comes in on line 86 and that will be passed in from the parent component here. Sorry, wrong way. So this is how we're calculating uh, the options that we're feeding into that React component. Again, there's data and options. I'll go over the data in a minute, but let's take a look at the options first. So we have this constant that I created on line 24, and this is day strings. Um, this is an array of strings that count from one to 31. And this is the most amount, I don't think there's any month that has 32 days in it. So it's always gonna count from one to 32. On line 57, we're gonna create a new date that's equal to today in your local time, as I covered in a previous video about working with dates in JavaScript. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. Uh, on line 58, we're getting the month, and then that returns an index value from zero to 11, so we need to add one to it. And then the year is created on line 59, date dot get full year, so that will return 1990 whatever or 2020 whatever. So in order to get the days in the month, I have a utility function that I'm importing at the top of this file. You can't see it, um, but I'll show it in a second. And that is on line 61. It's a days in the month function, and it takes in the month and the year. So that will return the number of days in the month that gets passed in. So on line 63, we're creating the labels constant that we were passing in, I believe, to our data object, yes, so that's getting passed in on line 88 here in our React component, but we're creating it here on line 63. And the labels is that day strings array, which is full string constants, one through 31, and we're slicing it from zero to the number of days in this month, which is currently February. So that'll be 28, which would be the 27th index or the 20, it's inclusive. So it'll be the 28th index. Um, and then our month string, is going to be, that's on line 65, that is going to be the label of our graph, so February. 
we're going to take the date that we created on line 57 and we're going to to locale string that date and we're going to pass in some option options here default and month long so instead of feb it'll say february since so formatted correctly so now we're creating this options object on line 67 this is a lot of default data that is provided to you in the documentation for Chart.js, which I will link to in the description of this video. Don't worry. Um, but you will take this object and then I'm just changing the title on line 75. We are displaying it, which is line 74 is a Boolean display, true or false. 75, we have the text that we want to display in that title, and that will be equal to the month string that we're creating on line 65. So that handles our x-axis, days of the month, that handles the title of the chart, but to get the y-axis, you do need to add a property on line 78, which I added called scales. That is an object, and you can dynamically update the scales if you want, but my use case was pretty straightforward. So I wanted to change the y-axis on line 79, and it takes in a min or max value. It also takes a callback function where you can dynamically update it. But again, it was more complicated than I needed. I just set the minimum value to zero and the maximum to 12, since that will be a constant for my application. Hopefully all that makes sense. If you have any questions on this, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer as fast as I can. Okay, so here is that utility function that I talked about in the last slide. This gets you the number of days in the month for the month and year that you pass in. This is a very straightforward function. That's a quick one-liner. You're gonna return a new date that takes in the year and the month. And then zero is going to be the last uh, day in the previous month. So I think in a previous slide, we took the month as an index plus one. The date is gonna take in the index. So this will take in the next month. So in, uh, instead of February, this would be, um, whatever comes after February, January, February, March, embarrassing. So the zeroth index of March would be the last day of February, which would be the 28th. And then we get the date off of that date object using that utility function at the end of line 45. And that should return 28 because it should be the 28th of February. And so the days in this month on line 61 will return 28 for February. That's what days in this days in month function will return. That's a little confusing, but hopefully you can follow along. So here, now that we've uh, established how we're creating the boundaries of our line chart, the title, the X and Y axes, we need to fetch our data. I've covered how I'm working with the date object in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but we're doing that on line 67 through 70. We are creating a new day, which is equal to the, today's date locally to the user. We're setting the date to the first, which the first of this month, and we're setting the hours on that date to zero. So it would be midnight at the first of this month. Then we're going to query our Superbase um, instance from the Pomodoro's table and select everything completed at that is equal to this user's ID on 76 GTE is greater than or equal to where the completed at time of those Pomodoros is going to match the second argument passed into that function. So it's greater than or equal to where the completed at time is greater than or equal to the start of month UTC, which we're creating on line 70. So if data is returned from that request, we are going to create a new date that is equal to today. We're going to create a new constant that is going to equal the Pomodoros per day. So we've gotten all of our Pomodoro data. We need to format it now so that Chart.js understands it. So we're creating a new array and filling it with zeros on line 84. And what this represents is um, the number of days that have happened so far in this month. So when we create a new array on line 84, new array, what gets passed into that first function, today.getDate, that will be whatever today's day is. So I don't, I think today's the seventh. So that will be seven, an array. So we're creating an array of length seven, and then we're filling it with zeros. So POMOs per day, POMOs per day, is currently an array of length seven full of zeros, okay? So now we're gonna loop over each Pomodoro of our data object. And 
we're going to increment the zeros that match the, where the Pomodoros were completed, if that makes sense. So for each Pomodoro, we're gonna check if the completed at date, the completed at date, and we're gonna create a new date that matches the completed at date on the Pomodoro itself. We're going to, on 88, completed at width offset is going to be the completed at date, and we're gonna get the time, and that's going to get the offset between UTC and uh, your local time. This was very complicated to do. I talked about in a recent video about issues working with dates. And this is where, so when we're getting the Pomodoros from the database, they're all in UTC time. So we're gonna have to convert those to local time in order to make sure that the line graph is populated correctly. So uh, on line 90, that offset is going to equal the completed at date that get time zone offset which will return the time zone offset in minutes. So as I left a comment on 89, we're gonna have to convert to seconds by multiplying it by 60, and then milliseconds by multiplying it by 1,000. And then the completed at without offset is going to equal the completed at with offset and minus the offset. So the correct local time is going to equal a new date and we can pass in the completed at without the offset little complicated. Hopefully you don't have the same issue, but the main takeaway here might be that you need to create an array and uh, an array of numbers is the format of the data that you need to pass into your chart.js object. And for me, this is just how I'm doing that. There's, as I've said in a previous video, there's probably a better way. If you know of the better way, please leave a comment down below. This is just the way that I did it. It's working for me. If it's wrong, hopefully you learn from my mistake. If it's right, hopefully it helps you. So on 95, the Pomodoro's per day array at the index of the corrected local time that get date, and we need to minus one here so that we can match the date that is returned from our date object to the index of the array. So if it is, for example, the second, that will be at the first index of the array because array indexing starts at zero. And then we're gonna set that array's value at that index equal to its value plus one. And then after we loop through our entire uh, data set and we correctly attribute each completed Pomodoro to the array index that represents each day that that Pomodoro happened on, we will have our correct our, uh, array of numbers, which will be our Pomodoros per day, which we are returning on line 99. And uh, we specifically type that in this function on line 66. This function will return a promise that is an array of numbers because you should always type your return functions. I don't know what Theo is talking about. If you've seen his tweets or videos about uh, how type inference is better, he seems crazy to me. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Sorry that this video ran a little long, but again, if you have any questions, please just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it as quickly as possible. If you did find value in this video though, please hit the like button. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.